Welcome back to another edition of Elevate Your Grind brought to you by the Cannabis Lab. I am your host, Todd Rosales. I hope everybody had a very prosperous week. I hope mm. you guys got everything you needed to get done. We are here. We are live. It is Friday. I am giving you permission to stop working for the day. Don't tell your boss <laughs> that because he probably won't buy that excuse. But having said that, you do have my permission. So do what you want with it. Okay, folks. <laughs> um, we had a great week of episodes today for this week. Actually, we had Andreas Newman from Juicy Holdings on Tuesday. It was a pleasure speaking to him. What an interesting background. Wanted to talk to him more about the Foo Fighters because I love Dave Grohl and that 2008 Live at Wembley concert. If I can time travel, we we'll probably end up back there. We had a great conversation with Rosie Matteo. I love Rosie. I think we talked about everything but cannabis, so I apologize for that. We're going to have Rosie back on. I listen, she is a workhorse. She is a hero to me. She is a warrior. She works harder than most people I've talked to. And I wanted to pick her brain. So sometimes I do a show for me. It's not for you. That one was for me. I did this show for me. We'll do another one for you. Okay. All right, folks. I'm very excited about today's conversation because as you know, I live in the state of Florida and this conversation today is going to focus on my home state. So I will try not to make this episode for me again, but at the end of the day, I'm in Florida. Not all of you are. So I'm going to be a little selfish. Okay. So with that in mind, please welcome Jen Drake and Mike Medor of AYR Air and Liberty Air. Health Science, as we call the Florida Department. So Jen, Mike, thank you both so much for joining us. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So Jen, you are up in New York. You're at the, the global headquarters of AYR and you've been with the company since the early days. I, yeah. so I want to start with you real quick and Mike, trust me, you will get your fair share of questions because like I said, you're, you're focusing on the state of Florida here, <laughs> but I love hearing you talk about the business when, you know, I've seen you on Benzing and a lot of things because <laughs> you back up my thesis of what I said two years ago on the show and a year and a half ago on the show. And although, listen, I don't claim to be the smartest person. It makes me feel good when people echo what I've said. Clearly, you lived it. I was just giving a blanket opinion. But you were saying you guys started with a small footprint. You figured it out. You figured out the SOPs, the processes, the procedures. You figured out how to do everything right. And then once you figured that out, you said, boom, it's time to scale. When we were in the early days of this industry, I think people treated it like tech, like an Uber or, or something else where they're like, we just need user acquisition, user acquisition. At the end of the day, this is this is not tech. This is CPG. This is agriculture. This is shipping and logistics. It is a different animal. So clearly you have an extensive background in stuff like this, but what led you guys to kind of take that step back and say, Hey, wait, wait, everybody else is doing it wrong. Even though people are throwing money at them, we need to figure everything out. And then when they all fall on their face, we'll be in a position to scale. Not that I basically ripped off your entire Benzinga presentation and took it out of your hands. But please <laughs> talk to us about, you know, the early days. So when we started in this business, um, uh, late in sort of in 2017, we really kind of took a step back, did a ton of research, saw as many companies as we could um, all across the country. And it was super clear to us that this is a highly regulated operating and consumer product business. And the way to succeed in a business like that is to build a super strong foundation, be extremely good at executing and doing what you do, really kind of work your assets incredibly hard so that you are an expert at the very hard things of being a vertically integrated company, growing, which is the hardest thing, in manufacturing, extracting, manufacturing, efficient manufacturing and packaging, a great retail experience and branding. And taking all of that together to make a great execution-oriented operating company. And then once you're good at that, take that show on the road and expand your footprint to other states, to other regions, to other geographies where you can bring your expertise to bear. But it was super clear to us that spreading yourself really, really, really thin across a huge number of kind of different states was going to dilute one of the things that is most precious in this business, um, and that's talent. We just did, we, it was really clear to us that you needed um, to have excellent talent at each of those parts of the value chain and that 
although you're getting more and more kind of good talent into the business now, there was not a huge amount of talent in the business back in 2017 and 2018. And candidly, with a highly fragmented industry like we have today, there still probably isn't enough great talent to go around. And so when we think about what makes our business really good and really run, it's because we have really been quite strategic and quite thoughtful about what are the key ingredients to success? And key ingredients are people, time, attention, and talent. Um, and those things at the very beginning, um, we were focused on them. And as we grow, we are still focused on attracting talent and creating an excellent, excellent team culture so that we continue to attract and retain the best people in the cannabis industry in air. And that's our goal. And Mike is a great example of that. We're so happy to have Mike leading our charge in Florida. Excuse me, I'll handle the transitions here. You took that one right. <laughs> she did it. Is that the well, payback too. for taking your Benzinga, your your Benzinga presentation? Geez. Um, <laughs> but no, in, in that fact, I, I agree with that because you know Mike and I were talking and we talk about his background and where he comes yeah. from. And I told him before the show, I'm. Very excited, Mike, for you to be joining Air and to be joining Liberty because I know where you came from. I am a patient in this market and you did great. You did great once and I absolutely believe that you're going to do it again. And as I told you, for all my stalkers out there, I live down the street from the, the 441 and Glades dispensary. I am very excited for you to be making that hopefully my favorite place to stop in the state. So you know, Jen, you, you found Mike, obviously 20 years as a Coke dealer. So, um, cannabis was next. And I've been laughing at that joke for about 12 hours now. And I know it's it terrible, works but it, it does. And you've probably heard it so many times. Um, but 20 years with Coca-Cola and, and going through that, you know, Jen, before we just jump back to mm -hmm. Mike, seeing his background, just with the different product launches and such a deep background in beverages and CPG, I imagine that's one of the biggest attractive features about bringing Mike onto the team. And then not only having that 20 years of CPG experience, but also proving himself in the cannabis space already. I, I, I not to like, you know, help my, him with his quarterly review, but I imagine it was almost a no brainer when you, when you saw his name on the chart. Absolutely. The, the CPG experience is excellent. Um, look, Coke is a great training ground for marketing um, for customer experience, for branding and brand launches. So it's, um, it is, it, it's great to have that experience. Um, uh, and I think that beyond just the Coke experience, Mike has shown himself in his kind of in his history to be both a great entrepreneur, a great problem solver, a great manager of people. Uh, and and all you don't just because you were just because you grew up in like the Coke environment, you got that classical training doesn't mean you have, um, you know, those other great skill sets and having kind of blue chip institutional training and background, plus that entrepreneurial proactive spirit that those two things together are really the ingredients for being a great kind of performer and a you know, great talent in the cannabis space. And, you know, Mike is a perfect example of that. And as you say, like, he's done this before. I, I like to think he's going to do it even better a second time. I, I, I hope so. I did for this is all upside for me. Like I said, the closest dispensary in my house just becomes the best on the block. So, Mike, you are a veteran of the No Florida pressure, industry. Mike. None. No pressure. None whatsoever. whatsoever. I feel no you pressure. Know, there's, just a, there's, a, there's a Papa's herb lighter over to the right there. No pressure. Um, perfect. So... On that note, you're a veteran of the Florida cannabis industry. You yeah. know that we have a very, very unique industry in the sense that there are, what, 15, 16, 17 people actually operating their license right now. I know that number is yep. going to increase. But at the end of the day, with last count I saw was around 460,000 patients. It might be up over 500 now. I know the OMU came out today. We did $1.2 billion in sales from 454,000 patients. So there is an opportunity to grab a lot of revenue here, but it's from a small pool of people. So clearly quality, customer service, all of that is crucial in the Florida market. When you look at you know 
bringing liberty to the forefront, what are some of the plans that you have that obviously you can discuss? And, you know, what are you excited about getting your hands in, into the into the dirt here? Yeah, no, first of all, I appreciate the warm welcome. I think from a liberty perspective, I'm super, and from an air perspective, everything starts, as Jen said, with people and the consumer. So from a people perspective, liberty is, <clears throat> we have amazing people. We have an amazing team being part of air. <laughs> What we've been able to accomplish in the last, you know, I've been here 90 days, has been unbelievable. And that's what really drew me when I, when I pursued AIR, what drew me to the company is the people and the talent. Specifically for Florida, I think what's really important is we listen to the consumer. What does the consumer want? And they, the patients of Florida are very vocal, very opinionated. I love that. So if we yeah. deliver, <laughs> right, in a good way, that's, yeah. I want you know, I've talked to more patients over the last 90 days. I've been in more stores. What do you think of us? What are our strengths? What are what do what do we do well? And what do you want that we're not delivering? And where have we? Where are the opportunities to give you products that you have or quality that you're missing? So listening to that, I mean, the, the first I'll give you three things that consumers have already you know told us. They want all MMTCs to be easier to do business with. So a couple things we've done immediately. We implemented debit cards. So you can come into a Liberty store now and use a debit card, uh, which wow. is fantastic. So second thing is, you know, we were told, hey, you're not open long enough. So we were only open on like Saturday. We we're only open 10 to five. Well, that, that doesn't work. So last week we changed our hours. Now we're open from nine to eight thirty, Monday through Saturday, 10 to five on Sunday. So we're trying to be more accessible, accessible for people. The third, which is a work in progress, is our e-commerce platform or website. Consumers want to go and they want to know, especially in Florida, where everyone struggles with flower supply and, and that type of thing. What do you have in stock? What's available now? And what can I get? And, and give me real-time information on my phone or my computer. So we're, we're in the process of improving that in a really big way. And there's a lot of step change that will come there. Yeah, no, I, you know, it's funny. It's, it's like, geez, he's, he's been listening to these kind of mic in my office or something. I'm listening to everything <laughs> I'm complaining about, but you're hundred percent right. Like I was talking to a good friend of mine who was also in the industry and listen, I, Florida, I love your weed, love the companies. I'm so happy it's legal, but at the end of the day, it, it's not a convenient stop to go pick up cannabis right now. It's, it's a mm -hmm. long process. It, you know, you're, you're not popping in to grab some weed. No. It, it's not like, you know, Jen, you've got great stores out in Nevada with mint in the dispensary. It's not the same experience. So that's why I love the fact that, you know, Mike, not only do you have the experience in your past, but also the power of air behind you to take all of that, you know, all that knowledge, all that experience, all that beautiful design and everything else and implement, as I will say, what you're allowed to down here in Florida, because we can't do everything. We can't have the beautiful packaging and a lot of that stuff. But, you know, I bet, you know, this time around, it's nice to have a very experienced powerhouse of an MSO behind you, where in the past, like, nothing against the old company, but you were the powerhouse. You were the powerhouse of that company. You guys, you guys led that company. Now you have the past experience of air in the markets that they're in and taking that into Florida. That's got to really energize you to get going. Oh, ab absolutely. The, the power of our organization across the U.S. I, you know, every week we have a, a staff call where we're talking about what's happening in Massachusetts or we're talking about what's happening in, in Nevada and learning from the, the group of people that work in those stores, in those dispensaries, and what what's working in Massachusetts is is really behind example is the Origin launch down in Florida. Uh, they have a highly curated, highly highly uh, boutique, really good quality wax and crumble product uh, that will bring down to Florida. And then learning, you know, you said it as well around the consumer experience. I mean, who wants to wait an hour or two hours to shop a store? So we're really working hard on getting people in and out. And our high volume stores in Nevada prove they can do that really quickly. So we're learning, taking their SOPs, taking their best practices, bringing them here. That's the power of air. And we've already seen a huge, our, our, our speed of service has gone up and we've already gotten a ton of feedback that patients are noticing a difference. And it's a it's not going to happen overnight, but that's really important. That's why it's exciting to be part of air. Very cool, man. No, like I said, where that location of the dispensary that you have in Boca Raton, unincorporated, for those of you that know South Florida, 
It's yeah. in a shopping center with a Publix and a Home Depot and Dominic's, which is great pizza. And it a is. lot of shops where it literally to me is the future of cannabis, at least from a recreational standpoint, where I'm going and getting my groceries and things I actually need and then grabbing my cannabis as well, too. So for you to lower those lead times, it makes it that that's the future for me. And that's how it should be. Jen, I, I want to circle back to you just looking at the overall air strategy and how important Florida was for you, because I know that you had talked about limited license states where vertical integration is available. Clearly, mm -hmm. Florida is the ultimate limited license state with what 30 something million people in it and only 22 available licenses but those licenses also come with a very high price tag so you have to really want to be here and and i'm going to throw this out there you probably know how to weigh this risk better than i do there's always the impending threat that vertical integration will be broken up and those licenses won't be worth what they are right now now clearly mm -hmm. i'm sure you guys have done your due diligence and you're much more educated than the guy sitting in his home with a microphone and a camera but i'd really <laughs> love to understand the approach of of entering the florida market <laughs> and weighing that that opportunity cost with the the size of the license well look i mean florida is an amazing state it as you say it's like one of the, it's the third most populous state in the nation. Um, that by definition makes it a really, really interesting place to do business. Um, at AIR, we have a lot of experience working in both doing great job at retail, but also doing a great job at wholesale. So our Massachusetts business, um, our wholesale business is bigger than our retail business right now. Uh, and we expect that to be, that we expect those businesses to be equally sized in New Jersey, in Pennsylvania, our wholesale business would be huge in Nevada if our retail business didn't take up so much of our capacity. Um, <laughs> so we, we, we love both sides of the business. Every state has different dynamics and we have shown ourselves to be very successful in both retail focused markets like Florida and Nevada and wholesale and markets where wholesale is equally important like New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Massachusetts. Um, in Florida specifically, being such a big state um, with so with the opportunity to open so many um, so many retail dispensaries, now they're competitive because everybody can open as much as it is limited license, meaning only a certain number of licenses. Um, it's unlimited in terms of the number of dispensaries, so it's a very competitive market. Um, and really, um, but the addressable market is so big. And if you can get your customer experience right. And, and I think this is super important and why we felt like we were uniquely positioned to do a great job in Florida. If you can get your customer experience right and your cultivation right, you can provide excellent flour to people. You can grow great wheat um, and provide that to your customers. If you can do that in Florida, you have the ability to really, really supercharge that market. Um, because that's what people are coming to you for. People are, patients are coming because they want to get great flour. And at AIR, we know it all starts with the plant. We know that excellent cultivation is what brings people to your stores. It's what brings people in for their wellness and wonder experience. It is what drives the cannabis business. And we are experts at growing good flour in all of our markets. And so when we had the opportunity to enter Florida, um, and via the Liberty Health Sciences business, knowing that it had great bone structure, but really needed a better customer experience, enter Mike Madar, um, and excellent cultivation, enter our head cultivator, Darren, bringing those two people together in the Florida market, addressing the, the true needs of the market with great cultivation and a great customer experience and people who have done it before, it was a no brainer to us that buying Florida, I think we bought it for $300 million um, when we originally kind of entered the, entered, um, the transaction, that $300, million, uh, that $300 million business could easily be worth five times that given that we're gonna get it right. And that's why we're actually moving our company headquarters to Florida because it's such an important part of our business. We're voting with our feet and all of the company, all of the people at, uh, at headquarters are moving to Florida because it's such an important part of our business. So not because of the snow in New York. I like the snow. 
I like seasons. <laughs> That's I didn't I didn't even realize that. Where are you guys? What city are you guys moving the headquarters to? If you have that picked uh, up, to Miami. Very cool. You're in yeah. my backyard now. That is ex- now I'm really excited about this. Exactly. Exactly. So very cool. So Mike, you know, I, a, you know, I, I'm, you guys are going to have the whole powerhouse of air here in Florida. You have a lot of power behind you. You know, it, I think obviously part of the reason that air wanted you was your experience running a sizable amount of stores, right. With air or Liberty health now having 36 stores in the state of Florida, you and I talked about the Florida OMMU. It's no secret how you guys are doing as a company. We can see it every week. So when I look at the sales that you guys are doing, it looks like you're doing most of your business is actually coming from the concentrate side of the business everywhere, which is awesome because that is a very competitive market, especially for the kind of curious, not so much the actual wax and crumbles, but the, mm-hmm. the cartridges and the ratioed yeah. products and things like that. I shit on cartridges all the time. Um, but they're way too convenient. They listen, it's not you. It's the entire industry. To me, nobody has made a cartridge yet. That feels like flour. It just hasn't happened. I'm excited for that. But at the end of the day, I can't ignore the form factor because it's just too damn convenient. It's everything you need. It's discreet. There's no, it's not invasive and everything else. So I'm excited for the future of that, but clearly with such a great concentrate and vape cart business, if you will, I imagine there is a good opportunity for you on the flower side. So when you start digging your hands into, you know, this whole change, besides just the customer experience and everything else that makes us feel good, it goes down to the product. So I imagine there's going to be a heavy emphasis on the flower, which really in turn is going to make your concentrate business even better. Yeah, we're really, you know, from our, if you listen to our earnings call last week, uh, John Sandelman, our CEO, talked about this quite a bit about Florida. I, I did you know, because I was just going to set this up. I'm selfish like that. No, it's, it's all good, man. Um, but he talked about one of our challenges with Liberty is, you know, there were times over the last year, year and a half where you'd walk into our store and we'd be out of flour or we'd, we'd only have flour two days a week or we'd only have two strains. And so when you see our performance, you know, OMU reports it weekly. Um, our underperformance in flowers is, is driven by the lack of supply and lack of variety. Working, you know, having come in, Darren, our head cultivator, come in, there's been a tremendous amount of focus around genetics, um, the whole process, uh, you know, from, from uh, the garden and, and cultivation and cloning to, you know, our flowering rooms to ensuring we're getting the, you know, variety we need going from two strains to 10 to 12. So as a consumer, I walk into our store now, I have 10 to 12 different strains I can choose from, whether that's in an eighth or a pre-roll or shake, you know, that's based on consumer demand, but we're getting there. We're on a journey um, to have that type of variety and then really increase the amount of A-bud we grow. So the higher quality smokable flower is exceptionally important. So we've looked at, and John talked a lot about the investments Air has made in our grow up in Gainesville. And they've been significant and those investments will pay off. Now it is an agricultural product, so it takes time. But, you know, I'm excited because the the stuff that's coming out from a curing perspective is the best we've ever grown. And it's just going to get better and better and have more varieties, more unique things for the Florida consumer to try. And so we can match the flower business to our strong. I agree with you from a concentrate perspective, but from a concentrate perspective. And then you have a balance and really gives the consumer and the patients the choice they want. And if I walk into our store and I have 13 or 14, 15 strains to choose from as a consumer, that's great. Cause what am I trying, you know, what, what I'm trying to accomplish and here's, here's the solution. So, yeah. and so yeah, the Boca I, store will become your store because we'll have that. You'll come in and hopefully you're like, okay, I really want to try, you know, silver haze or I want to try or banana OG or, or whatever the, whatever the strain is. And- and I do want to try both of those. Actually, those are two. Yeah. Those are two strains that are right up my alley. Um, I, I have to stop for one second. I think I figured out the problem with your, all your flour. Um, as a graduate of the uh, Florida State University, I have to say that nothing good ever comes out of Gainesville. So if you guys yeah. had your grow somewhere else, it would probably do but no. I, I Yeah, my wife's a no though, so you know it's it's hard being in Gainesville too. I can't, I can't, you know, let you just mention that name without talking trash about it, but I'm actually curious. I want to go back to the strains and stuff because I have a question about strain selection and what you guys do to focus on that. But how are, how do stores perform in college towns? I'm curious about this because I was having a conversation with, with a good friend of mine I went to school with today. 
um, and maybe this might reveal too much of myself, but we, I went to Florida State. You guys have a Tallahassee location that is right next to Gumby's Pizza. Yes, I worked. Is. I was a manager at Mike's Beer Barn across the street in the days. And when I went to class, I'd park at Mike's and I'd walk by where that Liberty is today. I used to do I used to do band promotion and I would make my flyers in the copy place that's connected to your wall. Yes, folks, I understand this is now my podcast. The audience is gone. But I look at that and he responded to me and said, could you imagine if we had that in Florida? And my response to him, because, you know, we knew some people in the gray market and whatnot, was we wouldn't have done it because we had access to stuff cheaper. And that was just me. And that's the entire legal market back then. Of course, we were poor college kids. So what we were getting was terrible. But I'm curious to know in today's age, with the emphasis on putting clean stuff on your body, in your body, with the different price points and everything else you have, whether it's the whole flower or if it's the juniors or whatever, you know, popcorn as people call it, how do stores in college towns tend to perform? I'm curious to know. Well, I think it goes back, you hit on something that's really important and that's quality and the transparency of, of how we grow the product. So as you're aware, everything in Florida has to be third-party tested. And so everything goes through a certificate of analysis and has a very rigorous process where it's tested for a variety of things. So if you're going to shop in the black market, you're, you know, you're really rolling the dice. Um, yeah. So we, we take exceptional, you know, with a high degree of seriousness. It is the most important thing we do in terms of the, the safety and the transparency of how we grow. Um, and that's on every, you can, you know, find the COA of every batch we put out. So from a college perspective or, or a student perspective, that has to play into your value equation without a doubt. Um, so we do, you know, every store is unique and it depends on where it is. I wouldn't say colleges are more or less better than other places. It, it really depends on the dynamics of the marketplace and the competition and where you're at in the city. Um, so it, it, it's really hard to answer that question, but I Got think it. if I'm a consumer, I'm really interested in the transparency and, and how it's grown um, and knowing what's in my weed. And I think that's especially that's true as we as we get new consumers into the market. Yes. Um, and um, and uh, first of all, I have to, I, I also have to say we can only sell to people who are over 21. Very important. So a lot of mm -hmm. college students aren't able to access our products. Um, uh, well, it depends. I mean, for, for medical cards, it depends on, um, on mm -hmm. you know, whether you where you are with respect to uh, with respect to that. But um, uh, so for some people over 18. But um, but. I, so I just, but I do have to say that always, it's very important. Um, but going back to the new consumer, the new consumer, as we get more and more people, you mentioned the 500,000 almost people in Florida, across the nation, as new people come into the market, there are people who are interested in whole plant medicine. There are people who are interested in putting um, just the purest things into their body. They're moving away from pharmaceuticals and towards natural, kind of naturalistic, uh, and natural approaches to, um, to wellness. Um, and as part of that, what Mike said with respect to testing is essential, is absolutely essential. And it's, I think we all be firmly believe in the power of the plant and the importance of the plant um, in, the whole, in the full spectrum experience. And as you said, flowers, you know, the best way to experience that without a doubt. Um, I think that's why flower is so popular and will continue to be um, but for a wellness-oriented plant, uh, plant whole plant-focused consumer, testing is key. Knowing what is in what you're putting in your body and having it be as close to nature as possible is like a really important part of kind of the the future of cannabis. And as new, a new and more people tr uh, come in and 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 try for either the first time or the first time in a long time. I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. That is the entire reason why I wanted to get my medical card here in Florida is because I wanted to know what I was buying, where it was coming from. I think college students today, as they approach their senior year and beyond, and, you know, let's not forget, we have a lot of higher, you know, higher level grad students and things like that, where, you know, work does become tougher and stressor because you are going for a specialty degree. I think with you all setting up in college towns, there's another advantage for those people, whereas, they get to experience cannabis the right way in, in, in and after college, right? They get to experience it 
through an educated standpoint where they can go into a store and they can get a true education on the products and on terpene profiles and what works for what, like you said. And it's not just because I can tell you early on with me, I thought I was using it recreationally. And then the more and more that I used it, and it took me a long time to figure it out because we didn't have the education available today that I was using it from a wellness standpoint. I just didn't know that, right? So for a student 21 and over to walk into a store and sit down and have someone to be able to educate them the right way, you know, not that they make the joke, if you want free weed, tell a stoner you've never smoked. But at the end of the day, when, when Seth Rogen launched in Canada and he came out and said, hey, take a hit of a joint and wait 15 minutes before you hit it again, because this shit's strong. That's the way we need to be promoting it, not the other way, because I think the first impression is the most important thing. So that's why, you know, I, I joke around this, the sales in, in college towns, I guarantee they are going to go up on football weekends just because everything does, because I'm already planning my trip. When I go back up to Tallahassee for a game, I'm going to stop at Mike's, ask him, I can leave my car in the back like usual, walk to Liberty and then walk to the stadium from there. And I am excited about that. I might hit Gumby's Beats on the way back probably going to happen it's a tradition in tallahassee um <laughs> circling back away from my own personal podcast with the two of you when you look at this state i i see most of the dispensaries and most of the companies in the state they do have a more indica focused lineup of strains and you know i've talked to a lot of growers and executives in this in this state and it's just that's what the market says that it wants it wants the thing that's going to help and indica seems to be more popular I am a sativa guy. So looking down the road, when I walk into the Liberty and you have 12, 14, 15 different cultivars, if you will, you know, is there going to be a nice spread? Because I love that. But also at the end of the day, I understand that you guys are a company, the end intention, there is some intention to make money so you can continue to operate. Is it going to be heavy indica with a light sativa? Or are we going to have an even spread? I'm just curious when you look at the market, what it's asking for and what you guys think it needs to be out there. We're going to follow, we'll follow the market and we'll follow what the consumer wants. Um, it is, Florida does lead very heavily indica. So, you know, whether that's three fifths or, or whatever the number is, but the reality is there needs to be a, a strain and a variety for everyone because everyone has a different, you know, need and, and what they want. So our perspective is going to be, it's going to be a balance. You're going to have your, your hybrids, you're going to have your sativas, you're going to have your indicas, and those are going to be the high, highest quality um, that we can absolutely put out. And it's not, you know, you go down the road of THC percentage and THC C content, content. It's much more than that. In my view, it's, it's how it's cured. It's the turf profile. It's how it, you know, it's the jar appeal, how it smells, how it tastes. So ensuring that every strain, whatever the variety, you know, whatever um, it is, hits that completely. So you get that full smokable um, feeling and appearance and effect on every type of variety, whether that's a hybrid sativa or indica strain, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. really important to us. It, it's funny with the high THC percentages, I find myself going that direction often, even though I preach, don't listen to them. So it's funny, like even me who actively says like, Hey, the highest THC is not always the best. I look and I'll see a strain come out. I'm like, Oh my God, that's 24%. And then I'm like, wait a second. The one thing for me that I've noticed is the, the for me personally, and this may not be for everybody, the higher the THC percentage for me, the longer it lasts, the lower, the shorter it lasts, but the effects are usually around the same. Nothing brings me, you know, different levels or anything else. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm ex like I said, I'm excited for you to, to get your hands dirty here and really dig into the Florida market. I am a consumer here. Jen, I want to go back to you and talk about a new market that's come online that I'm really mm -hmm. excited about that. I, it is my home state and I'm really excited to go back there and check it out. But how has New Jersey been? from what you guys are you guys fully operational there i'm just curious i really don't know much about that market and i'm embarrassed to say that so i'm so glad you brought up new jersey because uh i think florida and new jersey are my two favorite markets i and it's not a secret i've said that a a bunch of times over the last over the last couple of months florida is the the biggest opportunity we have as a company just by sheer size and the the uh, amount that we can do there um uh, and that's, again, that's why we're moving because we're so excited about that opportunity. But I do have a super soft spot in my heart for New Jersey. I think pound for pound, New Jersey is going to be 
the best market in the country. It's super densely populated. Um, it's a third the size of Florida in terms of people, but you've got so much traffic going through. And um, I really think the medical market there has not been as developed as Florida. And so um, you haven't had as much opportunity for people to um, experience the benefits that they can that, that they can receive from cannabis. And so as the adult use um, regulations come in um, next year, they're you know, it's but was voted legal back in November. They're um, they're basically finalizing the regulation over the next couple of months, and by 2022, it'll be implemented. Um, but that's going to be an amazing opportunity for a huge number of people to get access to um, to the benefits of cannabis really for the first time. Uh, so we're super excited about uh, the New Jersey market. We um, we have one of the original medical licenses there. We were the first people to open all three of our medical dispensaries. So we really um, have a commitment to kind of provide access to the New Jersey consumer. And we're really looking forward to the opportunity to take that to the next level once New Jersey opens up for adult use uh, and more people are able to uh, to to access, uh, access the benefits they can get from cannabis. We're super, super excited about it. Um, and that's the one thing I'm a little bit sad about about moving to Florida is that I'm gonna, uh, I'm not gonna be as close to New Jersey to see that, uh, to see that market develop, but we'll come, we'll come back to that. There's about a flight every hour for 14 hours Well, not straight. anymore, not in COVID. They canceled so many flights. It's actually hard to get around. Yeah, but don't worry. When the world opens back up, you can choose Miami, Fort Lauderdale, or Palm Beach, you'll have a flight every <laughs> hour and a half hour between Newark, LaGuardia, or JFK. The problem is, the problem is you have now have three airports in each location that you have to do like an equation to figure out what the best flight is for you. So, but you know, hey, this is the sixth borough of New York. You will get plenty of New York feedback down here in Miami. I promise you. And then I have more of an opinion question for you because you guys are in New Jersey, you're in Massachusetts, you're in Pennsylvania. New York went online, right? They're going to, they've legalized adult use. Do you believe that federal legalization will be driven by the Northeast out of almost necessity? Because the Northeast right now almost operates as a singular region, like a singular state, right? People who work in Manhattan live in New Jersey, live in Connecticut, et cetera. Same with Boston. There's a lot of commuters outside of Massachusetts coming in. Pennsylvania is a similar story with people in Philadelphia coming from New Jersey. Do you believe that the Northeastern United States, because it is closer together and because those cities feed from multiple states, will be the driving force behind federal legalization almost because we have to? You know, I think that federal legalization is, first of all, it's really complex and it will be a real, it, it will be a real challenge to implement it. Um, and you're bringing up one, some of the a, a super, super good point and a great example of the type of complexity that that exists when it comes to trying to figure out how to bring cannabis from this weird patchwork of state by state regulations into a more coherent, cohesive federal oversight. And we will definitely get there. We will definitely get there. The question is how long will it take to get there? Um, and I'm hoping actually that it takes a little while longer than maybe some other people might want and, and why, like, you're like, why would you say that, Jen? Um, because it's really a hard question. Interstate yes. commerce, like the minute you allow interstate commerce, you allow international commerce. So does the US, like, and, and, and lawmakers know this. So they know that if they vote for interstate commerce, they're voting eventually for cannabis to be able to come from Mexico, from Colombia, from Canada, from wherever. That's a complicated question. Um, also, all of the different states, you know, they have regulated the, uh, the cannabis business in the way that they're most comfortable with. And there's going to be a push and pull between what they want and what the gov federal government might want. Um, the FDA will absolutely get involved when federal, federal legalization happens. You saw what that did to the CBD business. The CBD business is actually begging for the attention of the FDA right now. So they have clarity on their kind of regulatory regime. How, how, how messed up is your industry when you're begging for the FDA to regulate you more? Um, 
So that's, I mean, long way of saying, I, and we haven't even talked about patents and trademarks, um, yeah. intellectual property. So long way of saying that it's a complicated, complicated question, this federal legalization question. And I hope people, it takes a, a, a pretty, a decently long time only because it needs to take a decently long time for people to do it thoughtfully um, and properly and to make sure that this industry transitions in the, the, the most beneficial and seamless way possible um, because you don't want a disruption to people's kind of health and wellness. You don't want a disruption to people's jobs. Um, and you, you want, this is a, it's, it's candidly, it's an important, um, it's important to the tax, uh, to the tax, um, kind of to the tax positions of a lot of states. So you, you, you know, there are a lot of jobs, wellness, and, and um, kind of municipal tax reasons for us to try to treat this with kid gloves and make sure it transitions smoothly. I am one of these people in your camp about wanting it to take longer than sooner because I don't want it rushed to the table. I want it done right. Um, yeah. We've seen what happens when a cannabis industry gets launched improperly and how much work and effort it takes from the industry itself to make those changes. So I've said then on this show a, a hundred times that federal legalization scares the crap out of me because I don't know if it's going to be done right. I don't know if the right people are in place in our federal government and they are going to the right resources to get the information to do it right. Now, I could be wrong and I hope I'm wrong, but that's just my outside view. So I'm in the same camp as you. I'm just curious to see as the entire Northeastern United States lights up, what kind of an issue that's going to cause just because of the way that people commute and live. And, you know, that part of the country does act like a large state, although it is individual and there are so many different little ones there versus a California where California should be multiple states in its own right. So, you know, it, it's very interesting there. Um, well, I think listen, a States I, Act and decriminalization, I think a combination of those two could work really well um, in terms of uh, in terms of an interim solution uh, that deals with some of the things that, that you're worried about with or, or the, some of the issues that you're bringing up. And I think that the decriminalization is so important um, and, and some of the record expungement um, uh, thing, some of the record expungement goals are so important. I, you know, I think that's the first and most important thing I think that yeah. the industry, that the country needs. And that, and that needs to be part of it too. That goes back to doing it right is making sure that the people yeah. who should be taken care of are taken care of too. And that needs to be in the initial push because otherwise it's back to the industry to fight for it again, right? Yeah. And we, we all should be pushing forward, not trying to push for how things should be. So I agree with a lot of what you said. I know that we're getting up on the top of the hour here. This is the fun part about doing podcasts in the middle of the day. Y'all have meetings you still have to get to, right? Um, Mike, you know, you are at the helm here in Florida. I've put a lot of pressure on you to succeed just for the opinion of this show. But as you take the realms and as you start really going and, and turning the ship, what are you most excited for in Florida for Liberty this year that you're able to share? Is it the brands that Air brings to the table? Is the opportunity to, you know, really do it right in Florida again. I'm just really curious to what you're most excited about for the rest of 20. What are we in 2021? Yeah. 2021. Well, yeah. It's 2021. It kind of, it kind of like what year are we Snuck up on me? So I, I think I, I'm excited for two things. One is I'm excited for our team uh, because we have 422 people that work for Liberty across the state and they're ready to serve our consumers and our patients and they're ready to win in the marketplace. So bringing air brands to Florida, bringing that to the consumer, um, enhancing our retail experience from a patient perspective. I'm super excited to see taking liberty and seeing what that looks like over time and, and how we'll integrate some of the great things that AIR has done into our stores, but elevate the shopper experience and really create an environment where people want to come where it's easy. You're in and out. You have the best strains, the best product, the best variety, the best brands. And it's a no brainer for you to choose Liberty over anybody else. And you're going to do that over and over again, because the people that are working there are the best in the industry. So when I talk to my team, it's, we want to be the number one cannabis player in Florida. We know we can do that. It's, it's a huge, there's some great competitors here. So we want to do it in a humble way. And we know it's, it's a very competitive marketplace. 
But you do that by kind of what I just said. It's really around the brands, the experience, and our people. That's what really excites me. Um, the other thing I'll say is, you know, from a modality perspective, I told you this at the beginning, there's some really cool products out in the, in the rest of the country that aren't in Florida. You know, I think of what, what's happening in California and what's happening in our, you know, specifically in our Nevada business. When we're able to bring those to the Florida consumer in a big way, that can be game changers for us. So uh, I'm really kind of super stoked about the opportunity. And I really think it's going to be a really fun journey to get there together with the 422 people that, you know, put on a Liberty hat or, or shirt every single day and, and, and try to help our patients. Very cool, man. I'm, I'm like I said, I, I'm very excited for you to take over. I told you that off camera before we even started. And I meant that um, awesome. there is a brand you're bringing to the state. I won't bring it up by name, but I'm extremely excited for it to be here as one of my favorite brands out of California. So um, and I typically do not brag about that category of cannabis. So for me nice. to have a favorite there, I told you I'm a flower guy. So, you know, We'll see. So I'm very excited about that one. And then Jen, I'll turn that question over to you. You look at the overall air strategy this year. You got, listen, I work in the Nevada market very close with a lot of people. I have not met a single person that does not have a great thing to say about mint in the dispensary. I work with a lot of brands out there. You're very, very well loved there. I've heard great things in Massachusetts. I got to speak to Mike today about Florida. So as you are doing such a great job in each one of these states and moving on to the next, what are you excited about? Besides obviously the move to Miami and all the great food you're going to see down here, even though New York has amazing food, I get it. What are you excited about for air for 2021 and the rest of the year that you're able to share with us? Well, listen, I, I, we have, we're now in seven states uh, and the, each one of our states, and this is a really special thing about our company, um, every one of our states really matters to us. Uh, when we look at our 2022 expectations in terms of you know, revenue for the company, six of those seven states are gonna generate over 100 million of revenue. So they're all really important. And we're really excited about moving from you know, where we are today in 2021, which is you know, really a transition year for us where we're, you know, we're integrating with Liberty, we're bringing online a number of really important capital projects in Pennsylvania, in Arizona, in New Jersey, in Massachusetts. Um, and all of those things are gonna come online uh, at the end of this year and beginning of next and really just catapult us to you know, a whole different level in terms of revenue generation, uh, cash flow generation, and that's going to allow us to really invest even more into our business. You know, we're all about you know, we're all about the cultivation and the importance of the plant, and starting from that, you know, starting from you know the most important cornerstone of our business, which is you know the cannabis flower, um, and taking that through to the excellent customer experience that Mike is you know so, my, that Mike spearheads down in Florida and is like the poster child for um, for the rest of our business. Um, but we're, what we're really excited about is bringing that level of excellence from a cultivation standpoint and a consumer experience standpoint to every single place that we touch. Uh, because for us, you know, it's all about um, being that cultivator of wellness, creator of wonder in, all, in every, every single market where we have a presence. And you know, we're just, we're committed to that for our patients, for our customers for our communities and for our team. And um, we just want to keep it going. Very cool. I am excited for you to get a new computer this year. <laughs> outside of that. And my um, computer is a lemon. It's terrible. It's the worst. Yeah. It's the worst. And I thought that was gone with the 70s cars, but I think I have I have like a Pinto of a computer. It's terrible. Yeah. Let, let, let's get Jen a new computer. She's too important. She has to be on too many Zoom calls and, and podcasts oh and everything else. Um, no, we had some technical difficulties before the episode, but no, I, like I said, I'm very happy that I got to speak to both of you with, with Liberty being right down the street for me and then air being in so many different States, you know, for someone like me, it's cool to have an air familiar pun intended, I guess, air of familiarity when I go to another state and I can see the brands that I'm seeing down here in Florida and, and have that familiar experience that I know is going to be consistent. So 
I'm, I'm excited to check everybody out. Mike, I said, I'm excited to see what you do in this state. Mike, I would love to have you back in December at the end of the year and talk about all the great things that you've done. Jen, when you guys come down to my off to Miami, I would, and, and it's permanent, I would love to come down to the office and do another show there as well too. have you guys both back and, and do this again in person, because I want to get back to doing these in person. So you are thank very you both for welcome. your time. Yes. Thank you. Anything you guys want to promote, social media, websites, anything else before we let you go? Mike, it's all you. All right. Yeah. The, the only thing I say, come in and try, you know, we have new origin wax, new origin crumble, new origin RSO launched. It dropped on Tuesday. So this is what day four It's doing well. A lot of positive feedback. So as a consumer, come in our store, try it. So okay, cool. that's the, yeah. But thank you for uh, your time, man. Absolutely. Well, I will probably be heading down the street in the next few days to check out that super silver haze. Cause as I told you, I am a sativa guy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to keep, keep my eye on that menu, man, for sure. So thank you to Jen and Mike for joining us today. And thank you again to everybody at home for watching. Hope you learned something today. Like I said, you have my permission to take the rest of the day off might get you fired, but you still have my permission. If you missed any part of this interview, you can see it next week at youtube.com slash elevate your grind. Of course, we've got a whole nother swath of live interviews for you next week. You're going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on LinkedIn at Cannabis Lab and on Facebook at facebook.com slash cannabis group. Everybody, this has been another episode of Elevate Your Grind. We will see you next week.